Hi, my name is Christopher Drost and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be covering the first of four stages of transition, the closeted characters. When I first started making this series, I asked on Twitter what you wanted to know about transgender characters and there were a couple of things that kept popping up. Um, not exactly in those words, but a lot of people were interested to see trans characters in certain stages of transition. For example, Vicky wanted to know how to write a closeted character, Duncan wanted to specifically know about how to write a character post-transition, and Elisa literally asked what are the experience before, during and after transition. Then I sat down to make this video and then I realized that it was way too big to make it into one video. So instead I have identified four different phases of transition. I will be covering each one of them in a separate video. The four stages that I identified are the closeted characters, social transition, medical transition and last post transition. A little side note is that these stages are not actually clear cut. So uh, sometimes they overlap a little, for some people they will last longer, for some people they will last shorter. It's a very individual track that you're following. So keep in mind when you are watching this video that it is not like, oh, hey, this stage is over, we're going to the next stage. And also in case of a non-binary character, maybe they won't go through all the actual stages. Today we're talking about the closeted phase. What I want to start off with is that this is a very relevant phase for all the characters. So even if you are writing a character in social transition, medical transition or post transition, this phase will still matter because it is packed with experiences that will form the rest of their lives. And with that I mean that this stage really forms personality and certain types of behavior of your character. This stage is a lot of work, but it's worth spending time on because if you do this correctly, this character will be so three-dimensional and will have so much depth that it will definitely be worth your while. I want to underline that even though I'm making this video, that I still don't think it's a very good idea for cisgender writers to try and write a story focused on transgender issues without doing research, uh, more research than here in the videos. I don't think it's impossible for a cisgender writer to write a trans character who is struggling with coming to terms with their identity. But I do believe it's very easy to slip up and accidentally put in something that is not accurate. So if you're doing this, please, please, please do your research and also make sure that you have a good sensitivity reader. Next to your sensitivity reader, who will in the best case be trans themselves, you should also try to recruit transgender people to beta read for you. The more transgender people that can give you feedback you have, the better it is for your work. I'm actually most comfortable talking about this phase because I consider myself an expert. I have spent 29 years in the closet, so, you know, do with it what you want. The first thing I want to tell you is what I'm not going to cover. Because there is a very big difference between adults who come out and children that come out. Characters who transition early in their lives are very different from characters that have been closeted for a large portion of their lives because their personalities and their character traits develop differently. I will do a video on children and teenagers in transition later. The only thing that I'd like to point out in this, because this will come back later, is that children are often not closeted. Your gender identity forms before your sense of what people want from you fully develops. This means that children that are little and they go like, hey, I am in the wrong body, or a, a boy going, I'm a girl, or a girl going, I'm a boy, this, this comes from within them. And this is not filtered. It's a very big misconception among people that you can talk a kid into being from the other gender. That if you encourage your child's behavior, that you will cause them to be transgender. This is not true. It is actually the opposite way. You can keep saying to a transgender child that they are really from the other gender, but it will take a lot of time to actually convince them that they are. If I look at my own childhood when I was little, I would tell everybody who wanted to listen to me that I was a boy, but my bottom looked different. It took my parents years to convince me that I really was a girl. I'm not. 
The characters that I will be talking about are characters that have lived their lives as adults in the gender they were assigned at birth. With living adult life, I mean that uh, your character has moved out of your parents' house, they um, may be involved with somebody romantically, they are done with school, they have started their job, they, they have started to build their adult life. There's three things that are typical for this stage. The first one is that it starts with an inciting incident. I'm calling it this because I really have no better word for it. Anyway, this incident makes them question their gender identity. This doesn't mean that the character did not experience gender dysphoria at any point before in their lives. It just means that they may not have known what this feeling was. A lot of transgender people know their whole life there's something wrong and there's something different about them, but they can never put their finger on it. It is sort of like you have a puzzle and you've been trying to get to the picture your whole life, but it turns out there's a piece missing. And when somebody hands you that piece, you start again and you try again and then you can finally start to make out what the picture is. For me, the inciting incident was watching a documentary called Hij en Zij on the Dutch TV. This is a show that follows young transgender people in their transition. So these are all people that are already out, they're being interviewed, they tell about their lives, it's this kind of show. And it was the first time that I saw transgender people not being portrayed as freaks of nature. It was the first time that it was portrayed as something that you could be and something that was just occurring naturally. There was one story in particular from a trans guy when he talked about his past and how he felt. It was like he was talking about me. It was like he was telling my story. And that was very eye-opening for me. I had never seen anything like it before. The second thing that is typical for this stage is fear and denial. Questioning gender identity is a taboo, or at least in the Western world. So trying to start even thinking about what if you are anything else than the gender you were assigned at birth is very difficult. This is of course very weird because questioning your identity, your gender identity does not mean that you will end up being trans. Questioning your gender identity can also lead to being non-binary, agender, genderqueer, gender non-conforming, or it can even just circle back to, hey, I am cis. Nothing wrong with that, right? On top that it's a taboo to even consider your gender identity, it is also a big problem that education and representation are really not very good. It has been getting a little bit better over the last few years, but media tends to sensationalize transgender issues, often presenting them as freaks or misguided or confused, which is really funny because I think we know ourselves pretty well. <laughs> This also brings me to why representation matters so much. Because if education is not teaching us what it is to be transgender, then it should come from another source. And books are actually very good for that. Once you have finally started to think about your gender identity, for a lot of trans people, the now will kick in. And this more often than not leads to overcompensating behavior. So for trans men, this is a hyper feminine phase and for trans women, it's a hyper masculine phase. It's fake it till you make it on steroids. Speaking of which, this is me in a pink dress. Can't say I didn't try. I also want to point out that I'm smiling very uncomfortably in this picture. This was my go-to smile for whenever I was uncomfortable and I know that every single trans person out there has one of their own. After coming out, this smile is also very useful for when somebody is misgendering you but you're too polite to correct them. Anyway, back to overcompensating. This may be present at any given point in the life of the person who's transgender, but it's very likely to at least resurface while they're being in denial of their gender identity. I also want to touch upon how important it is to have a supportive environment. When I watched the documentary that made me realize that I might be transgender, I was at the time I was in a romantic relationship and my ex-partner was watching a show with me. After we watched the whole series, I turned to them and 
I tried to talk about my feelings about the show. They made clear that they thought it was nonsense, that I was clearly a woman and that my imagination had run wild. I was put under pressure to admit that I liked my body and without a fight I did. I just wasn't ready to do that yet. At this point, if my ex-partner had been supportive of me and would have had this dialogue with me, this could have saved me years of misery. Because at this point, I had a life and I was absolutely terrified to lose all of that. This is a very universal feeling for people who are older when they come out as transgender. The fear of losing everything you fought so hard for to get. The third and the last part is acceptance. And this phase can only end if the person accepts their gender identity. Sometimes this is with the help of therapists, sometimes they come to this realization on their own, uh, sometimes it takes a really long time and sometimes this goes fairly quickly. But however it comes and however it came about, it doesn't really matter because you cannot come out if you don't accept yourself first. Like I said, there is a lot of variation on how long this phase takes but for me, for reference, for me, it was almost four years. That being said, let's move on to the question of the day. My question to you is, did you ever question your identity? This can be about a lot of things. It can be about your gender, your sexuality, your nationality, religion. You name it, if you ever considered it, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's see if we can break this taboo together. That's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays. Yep. Hi.